today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about an animal that I've been wanting for quite a while, but I have not been able to get my hands on until now, and also how to introduce this animal safely to any domestic animals like dogs that you may already have. The scientific name of this animal is Domus lutum portatari, so I'm probably pronouncing that probably incorrectly, but it's the closest I can get to it, uh, and it has many, many common names, which I will get back to later. So. I've gotten one of these very recently enough and I've already introduced it to Beauty, but I figured I would actually record the interaction between themselves and Pickles so that you guys can see how they should respond and how your dog should respond to said animal. Beauty took to him right away. There was like a few minutes of I'm not sure what you are while he was moving around, but then he, she just settled in and she was fine with him and she accepted that he was there but he wasn't going to bother her and he wasn't going to hurt her in any way. So sometimes they're not too fond of sharing the same like corner of the room but aside from that they get along really really well. Domus lutum potatori is an amazing species. They're really interesting to look at. They're very easy to keep, very low maintenance and they can actually be fairly useful to humans. They contribute quite a lot. Now they're not doing anything medical wise but they can in a lot of ways make your life a lot easier. Due to a lot of people wanting these they have become very popular in recent times and breeders and mills have been churning them out like no tomorrow so unfortunately quite a lot of them do not have eyes anymore I'm afraid but through the wonders of modern day science and medical miracles we have been able to develop prosthetics that give a very good effect. So this is my guy who I have named Roach. Um, he is an amazing little guy. He's a little shy at first, but he does warm up to you. Uh, these guys are absolutely amazing. You can see his prosthetic eyes. He doesn't seem to mind a terrible amount. And honestly, I have pack bonded with this little guy so hard. He is the most adorable, least maintenance animal that I've ever had, ever. These guys are the modern descendants of the horseshoe crab, as you can tell from their roughly flat appearance and disc shape. And they've lost their tail, but that's completely okay because they've actually evolved to no longer be in the water. Lutum Botetori is a translation of dirt drinkers, what they used to do. They used to go along the bottom of the water like a pleco or like a loach and eat up all the dirt at the bottom of like the riverbeds and such. But over time they have evolved to be more land-dwelling creatures and they're very agoraphobic, they don't like big spaces. So quite a lot of them have actually taken up residence inside houses or domiciles. Hence their more modern name, Domus Lutum Potatori. The setup for these guys is quite simple, quite easy. They like to have a dock. So unlike a turtle dock like they would have had when they were still water dwelling, these guys have what's called a land dock. So a land dock needs to connect to some form of energy, usually electricity. So they have a feeding tube which attaches from the cable that goes into the wall into their dock. And then this electricity is converted into the closest thing we have to what they would originally eat in the wild. And they can then dock into those metal pieces there and absorb their nutrients through this dock. It is very important that this feeding tube is properly connected. Often there's a little light above it to let you know that it's okay. Green is good, red is bad. And to keep it out of the way to make sure they don't accidentally eat straight from the tube because if it is not processed by their dock, then it is not suitable for eating. Obviously, because these are deemed an exotic pet, they are quite expensive to bring to the vet. So we want to avoid that if at all possible. The more modern and high-tech docks will have some grooming supplies in them. So the brushes are very good for cleaning their teeth and making sure that anything they eat doesn't get stuck somewhere you don't want it. And then they have a dematting tool for just in case they get a little bit over carried away and their food gets kind of stuck around their hairs, you can then cut it away quite easily. They're pretty slow moving animals, so they're very easy to catch and pick up to handle, but I'm going to cover handling them in an entirely different video because I just don't have the time to be doing it here. But as you can see, he was okay with me picking him up to take him away from the docking station and he's completely okay for me to then place him back. And when you see the little light on him, he will have a blue light when he's in the middle of feeding. So you don't want to disrupt him during this time. So when he's over those two metal pieces, the blue light slowly pulsing means that he's currently in the middle of eating and should not be disturbed. When introducing to dogs, make sure the dogs have collars so you can grab them just in case something does go wrong 
but they're usually very good getting along with each other. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're going to be introducing to dogs especially is you're going to want to clear the floor. You don't want there to be any obstacles or hazards that might spook him. So we're going to move all these up here. I know, buddy. Two seconds. All right, including the sock that you stole. Apparently there's more socks that you stole. And this is just going to create a nice safe environment. We obviously don't want anything to startle him. It's kind of like you wouldn't put anything really bright or like a flapping blanket or something in a field with a horse because you don't want to scare them. So it's the exact same here. We're also going to pick up this blanket just because it might be a bit of rough terrain. We don't want to overly spook. I know, what's going on? See, come back. No, look, we're going to... <laughs> two, two, sec two seconds, please. Please let go. Please, thank you. Now just wait. Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Wait a second. Wait a second. All right. What I'm gonna do is, he's here in the corner. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. And now we're gonna, <laughs> we were going to introduce Pickle. Come here a moment. Now see this? This is Roach. No, we're nice to Roach. We don't wanna scare Roach. All right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take Roach out. He's awake, as you can see from the light bulb. We're going to place Roach down. We're going to tell him it's okay to go. He's taking his time. And there we go. So you just let him explore the area. We don't want to scare him unnecessarily. You can see he's trying to play with the ball. That's a good sign, being comfortable in his environment. Usually has met him before, so that's okay. Pickle, what do you think you're your friend? Huh? He's gone out of the room immediately, so he's already exploring his area. We're very proud of that. He's such a good boy. He's checking out his surroundings, seeing what the perimeter is. They might take a while to do this. They might take up to an hour or maybe two hours to really settle into an area and map out the area for themselves so they know what's the, what to expect. But this is a very, very good sign. Pickle, what do you think? Pickle has left him a chew toy. He doesn't seem all that interested. I think he really likes the ball. He keeps going back to it. So I'm very happy with him. He seems to be settling in really well. He doesn't seem too skittish. He's not attempting to hide. He's not doing any of his alerts. So sometimes when they're spooked or in, they're, in a, they're in an environment they don't recognize and they feel like they might be a bit lost, sometimes what happens is their little light, instead of it being just blue, they will camouflage themselves similar to how a chameleon changes their color and they'll turn it into a red flashing light. And this usually means that something's not okay. And so they'll do this until they're in either a better environment or they've realized where they are or the danger at hand is gone. So blue light is a happy boy and red light is not so good. Here we go, pickle. Look, it's a treat. Look, it's a treat. Look, it's a treat. treats and put them right here and hopefully this will encourage her to get along with Roach just a little bit better what do you think bud oh look at him playing with the ball that's adorable
think, Beauty? Do we like Roach? Move this table so you can get down. Come here, Beauty. Look, he has treats. So Beauty, as you can see, is a lot more comfortable with Roach. Good girl, Beauty. There's one left, Pickle, if you want to be brave. Pickle is not sure about this, but Beauty's a master of it. See? And now they'll be best friends and they'll pack bond. Pickle might take a little bit to <laughs> come out of her shell, but I'm sure they will be bestest of friends in no time. Isn't that right, Pickle? So, as you can see, they got along really well at the start. There was no aggression or fear from Roach whatsoever. Beauty has already seen him before and has settled in fairly quickly. She's happy to even eat off the top of his head like a little moving plate. Pickle is less, less keen, but she didn't try and attack him. She didn't show outward aggression, just a bit of wariness and trying to keep her distance. And she went closer when Beauty was there. So, hopefully between them... They'll be able to build up her bit of her confidence and she'll be able to be around Roach a bit more. The best thing about these guys is that their main diet is basically everything they find on the floor, including pet hair. So they can fully sustain themselves healthily with just pet hair off the floor and the occasional couple of crumbs and things. Because of this, they make an amazing addition to any household and I would really, really encourage everyone to consider rehoming one of these guys because there's so many of them out there without homes. You should do it. I mean, how could you say no to those little eyes? So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will do my absolute best to answer. Uh, hopefully over the next few days, uh, Pickle settles in a bit and is happy enough for Roach to be part of her life. And uh, yeah, no, that's it for this video. And I will see you guys again and very happy April Fools to all of you.